Now, and to answer this other question. Is it true that when you have gone to be with the Lord? All right, faith. What does gone to be with the Lord mean? If you have gone to be with the Lord? Okay. okay, when you die and you go to heaven. So this person asks, when you die and go to heaven, you can't see or know what's happening on earth. Is it true? After you die and you go to heaven, you can't see or know what's happening on earth. Is it true? Hongdi, is it true? Because you heard, right? For example, at um, Uncle Stephen Cheng's funeral, one of the brother said, I always pray for you. Stephen, I always pray for you. Now you are in heaven. Please pray for me and look after me. Hmm? Right? Now many Christians like to say that. Many Christians say, please look down from heaven and grandma, please look down from heaven and take care of us and look after us. Eh? Many people like to say that. So does, can it happen? Is it true? What do you think, Jennifer? No. It's not true. It's not true. Ah. Okay, so let's turn to Hebrews 12.1. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Some people cite this verse to say, no, 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 they are looking at us. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. They are looking at us. They are looking down on us and blessing us. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Can we read together? Hebrews 12, 1, reading. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So here, some people say, hey, look, 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 look. Now look, wherefore seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and run the race. Okay? Now some people read these verses like that. Huh? So Jennifer, we ask, so, so Jennifer is on earth, alright? Jennifer is on earth. And some read it as we are compass about. Compass means surrounded. Compass about with so great a cloud of witnesses. So a cloud, a cloud like in heaven. Wow, so many, you know, so many witnesses. You know, it's a witness, right? Witness means a lot of people looking at you, lah. Right? This and so many, like in a cloud like that. So all these witnesses, cloud in heaven. We we are surrounded. Wow, so many, some surrounded. Jennifer, you're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, all looking at Jennifer. Hmm? Okay. Then say if verse cho- chapter twelve verse one, seeing that we are compassed about, surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, then let us run our race with patience. So he say, then Jennifer, your life on earth, run. I don't know, run. All right? On earth, be a good Christian. Because a lot of people are watching and taking care of you. So run your Christian walk on earth well. So people, some people read this verse and say, oh, you see, those that die, they are like clouds of witnesses all looking down at us. You want to say hi to grandma? Right? Can grandma hear us? Grandpa hear us? Okay? Can or not? Cannot. So then what does this verse mean? Who can I ask? CP, you want to try? What does this verse mean? We are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, so let us run this race. They are all watching us. Ah, right? So CP noted. Now the question is, what's the meaning of witnesses? What is the meaning of witnesses? The question is, are they witnessing you or are you witnessing them? <laughs> Are you witnessing now? Are they witnessing you? Remember the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. It's about what? Eh, chapter 11 is about what? The next chapter. It is about all the different people of faith. Remember? Okay, look at chapter 11. You see chapter 11? About Abel, about Enoch, about Noah, about Abraham and Sarah, about Isaac, about Jacob, about Joseph, about Moses' parents, about Moses, about Joshua and Rahab and so on, and all the heroes of the faith. Remember, heroes of the faith. Huh? Now, what God is saying, with all these 
heroes of the faith that I have recorded for you, that you have know about their life. You know about their life. Their life was difficult on earth, but they were faithful, correct? They were persecuted, but they were faithful. So God is saying now, like CB pointed out, these witnesses means they are their lives. Their lives is a living witness recorded for us. Understand? Their life is a recording of, of a witness to us. And therefore, if they can live their life faithfully by faith, can Jennifer? If all these people you say, wow, Moses, um, Joshua, uh, uh, and, and so on, they, they were so courageous. All right? Now, with all their lives written for you, can Jennifer also be like them? By faith. Can or not? Can, right? So God is saying that with all the lives of these people who live their lives by faith, as a witness, we also, therefore, can live our life well on earth by faith, trusting in God. This is not saying that God, the people look down from heaven and witnessing our lives. Understand that? Okay, it's different. Now, the problem with... So, there is no one uh, that in heaven, the Bible tells us after a person dies, is separated. Okay? Now, what about the case of Lazarus and, and the rich man? Did the rich man look up to heaven and say, Abraham, can you ask Lazarus to drop a bit of water in my mouth? What did Abraham say? Okay, let's turn to Luke chapter 16. Let's turn to Luke chapter 16. Now verse 23. Shall we read together? Luke 16, 23. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom, he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and dip Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, betwixt us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, and neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Verse 27. Father, that will send him to my father's house. 28, For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. So, I, I tell you this. Let's understand the story here. Okay, next teens Q&A. Eh? Next teens Q&A. Noah, you have a homework. You will draw for us the picture of the explanation of Trinity, all right? Or the description of Trinity. Okay. Ah, okay. So next. A and, then, and then the rest, I will call you randomly. So you must be prepared. Now here is, here is the rich man in hell, correct? The rich man in hell. Fire. And then there was Abraham. And there was Lazarus. And Lazarus was in his bosom. So they were, they were very close. Then the rich man talked to Abraham and said, Hey, very hot, very, very, I'm suffering very bad. Please ask Lazarus to dip his finger in some water and let me taste. All right? I'm very, very hot, very painful, very thirsty. What did Abraham say? Abraham said that between the living and the dead. Now you look at your Bibles, Luke chapter 16. Verse 26, And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great, great gulf fixed, so that they which pass from hence cannot, uh, to you cannot. So he said this, there is no connection anymore. Abraham told, told the region, there is no connection. So Lazarus, can Lazarus help you? You don't look at, can Lazarus help you? Phoebe, can Lazarus dip some water and quench the thirst of this man? God said cannot. God said cannot. So from here we learn that God reveals 
there is a gulf, means there is a gap between the living and those on earth or in hell that no one can cross. Understand? So can grandma in heaven, okay, you do your exam. Oh, grandma, I forgot this one. Grandma, can you please help me? Grandma not listening. What about you, grandpa? Can you please help me? Okay, you can keep talking. God said no one can help you from heaven. Okay, those that have passed, they cannot help you from heaven. There's a gap. Now, furthermore, he says furthermore. Now, look at verse 30. Oh, sorry, verse 20, 28. Now, he said, hey, the rich man said, hey, you know, I'm in hell. It's very terrible now. I have, Elim, how many brothers and sisters? How many siblings? I have how many siblings? The rich man said, I have how many? Did you read or not? I have how many brethren? Huh? I have five brethren. He said, I got five brothers at home. Five siblings. Can you please send, send, send who? Okay, look at verse, um, verse 28. For I have five brethren that, they, that he may testify. Can you please send who? Lazarus to go and testify. Can or not? Can or not? He said, no, cannot. You want anyone to testify? They have the prophets. Have the prophets means what? Have the Bible. It's already written. They have the Bible. No one will be sent. Can you say, Grandma, I need a lot of help. Can you come tonight and help me? Can you look down from heaven and help me? This, this passage tells us no. No. All right? So there is no more connection. Now, but you will ask, then how come there is conversation? <laughs> so, all right, cannot help me. Lah. I talk to grandma at least. <laughs> now, this one special situation where God allowed and he made a revelation, understand? To explain to mankind, indeed, there is this gulf. He used a real situation of a real man, Lazarus, and a real man, rich man, to reveal to us a truth. Do you read in the Bible that people keep talking to people in heaven? God, all the time. You're supposed to keep talking to people in heaven, to someone in heaven. It's called Jesus Christ. All right? The only thing that God says, talk to someone in heaven, is who? Talk to who? Grandma? Grandpa? Talk to who? Cornelius? Talk to Jesus. The only connection from us to heaven and the only help that is coming from heaven to you when you talk to someone in heaven is from God. Understand that? Okay? Not from grandma, not from the past. Those pass away. God says, cannot deep water to help you, won't come back to help you. So there's no such thing. So should we say, uh, grandma, you, you go to the coffin. Huh? Grandma passed away, go coffin. Come up. Grandma, you know, look down from heaven and please take care of us, okay? You go back down. Should you do that? No, God already said no connection. No connection. Now, let me ask you, would you prefer grandma to help you or Jesus Christ to help you, Susan? Of course, Jesus Christ. I don't understand why people keep wanting, can you please look down from heaven and help me? Can you please look down from heaven and help me? When you have the help of Jesus Christ, God himself. Now, this is a very Roman Catholic concept, understand? The Roman Catholic always this concept, the saints, the saints help them. No, Jesus Christ is the only help and the only useful help, okay? So I ask you a further question. So no connection, no help from the dead except Jesus Christ. There is only one situation in the Bible where people try to talk to the dead and ask for help. Now you turn to... Um, where? Okay, turn to Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20. Now verse 27, shall we read together? Leviticus 20 verse 27 reading. A man also or a woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. 
their blood shall be upon them. Now, who are these wizards and familiar people who seek familiar spirit? These are people who try to call the people back from the dead. Understand that? Remember, God told King Saul, do not visit the witches. Do you have friends in school that play these board games? They put their finger on the bowl, and then the bowl move, and then they follow the bowl, and then they call for their relatives to come back and talk to them? Don't have a God, uh, during our time, God, now I don't know what, what it is, something else. Now, all these are witchcraft, understand? God in the Bible forbids any contact with the dead. He calls them people who seek familiar spirit. He calls them the wizards. And what should they do to them? Cornelius, hey Caleb, he said, when you find these people who try to contact the dead, what should you do to them? Stone them. What does stone them mean, Maggie? What does stone them mean? Stone them means stone them. Stone them means to kill them with stones, all right? Throw stones at them and kill them. That's the meaning. Stone them. So, peop, in fact, the Bible says anyone who tries to contact the dead, kill those people. So, you should not climb up to grandma or grandpa's coffin and say, Can you please look down from heaven and help me? You are considered a wizard. Now, these children like to be wizards, right? You're considered a practicing witchcraft. So God forbids the con contacting of the dead. Now I know. What about King Saul's case? Did King Saul meet with... You asked this question before. Did King Saul actually meet with Samuel? Did, right? King Saul went to a witch. The witch and God allowed Samuel to come back. But also to scold King Saul. Understand? In the Bible, do you typically read... Uh, is it normal? Is it the, is it the norm where... People keep talking with the dead. Hi, how are you? What are you doing? How's heaven? Do you see that? Very, very rare. Whenever it happens, it's an exception situation that God allowed. Understand? So there's no norm of contacting the dead. Alright, so whenever it comes to that, it's God condemning people. You want to talk to grandma? Oh no, your grandma is alive, sorry. <laughs> you want to talk to your dead relatives? No. God forbids it. Can your dead relative look after you? No, right? You, you go to the dead relative's altar. Now, I want to teach another principle here. When Christians... So can the dead and the living talk to each other? Can or not? No, huh? No. The Bible says no. In fact, don't try to con do that. The Bible says don't try to talk to the dead. Don't try to talk to the dead. If you do, you're considered a someone who is a... Who is a Wizard, and you must be killed. Then therefore, okay, that day someone was asking me, Pastor, you know, um, um, if I go to a relative's house, uh, I go to a relative's house, okay, you all listen carefully, uh, I go to a relative's house, then the relative's house have picture of grandpa and grandma. Alright? Have picture of grandpa and grandma hanging on the, hanging on the wall. Alright, so this person asked, if I go there, if I go there, can I, should I, should I bow to them? To respect them. Oh, grandpa, grandma, respect. I pay you my respect, grandpa, grandma. Or the person also asks, now what happens if I cannot? They say, what if, if I go to um, grandpa and grandma's tombstone? You know tombstone? At the, at, the, at the cemetery. When I go there, no, go ahead, draw and bow, I don't know why. Okay? Can I, can I also bow to the tombstone? Bow to the tombstone. Everything also cannot. Elim everything, why, why cannot? You can only bow to God. Ah. You can only bow to God. Did, 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 did the people many times bow to King David when he sat on the throne? In the Bible, you always read the people bow to David. They bow to David. They bow to King David. They bow to King David. It's allowed. It's allowed to bow to the king. Bow to people that you respect. 
You are right, they are not supposed to bow to worship, right? So we are not allowed to bow as worship. Hmm? When they ask Daniel and his friends to bow to the idols, they say no, correct? Because there is bowing in worship. But do you think Daniel and Joseph, they bow to, bow to the king? They also bow. But that's not worship, understand? Okay, so you cannot bow to worship. You're right. You're right, Elim. You cannot bow to worship. But Elim, hey, you don't respect grandma. Wait, your grandma passed away, right? Not yet. Oh yeah, not yet. <laughs> Okay, another one. Whose grandma passed away? Your grandpa. Oh, mine, mine, mine. All right? <laughs> My grandparents passed away. Then I go, to, I go there, and then everyone bow. But I'm like that. Everyone hit down there. Then my relative comes and says, Hey, you don't respect... How come you don't respect grandpa and grandma? How come you didn't bow? Did I bow? Did, am I worshipping grandpa, grandma? I'm not worshipping well. I'm just bowing for respect. Right? Respect. I'm bowing for respect, right? I, I don't worship them. So, Elim, if I don't bow to worship them, can I bow in respect to them? Bow in respect to the tombstone, bow in respect to the picture. Can I? Yes, now you change your mind. But, but what? Very good. I don't think there is any use because, remember, heaven and earth is a gap, right? Can heaven and earth people contact each other? God says no and don't do it. If you do it, you should be what to death? Stone to death, right? God says only those people who try to make connection with the dead, they must be stoned to death because it's a pagan culture, all right? So can I, so still don't answer it, right? so um, ask a doubt now. Uh, Howard, why can't I bow in respect to them? I'm not worshipping. Hmm? They cannot receive it, correct? Like Elim said, there's no point. They cannot receive it. Yes, Noah? But even if there's no point, are you, are you allowed to Even what? Even if there's no point, are you allowed to Okay, so, so he followed up with Elim's statement. Even there is no point. Are you allowed to do it? What do you think, Ben? No point, ah. But no point, no point. But everyone doing it, say no point anyway. No point means no harm, lah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you allowed to? What do you think, Racy? What do you think? No. Why? Say again. Because of. The second commandment is worship. Second commandment is about worship. Yeah, this is not about to worship. This is about for respect. The picture and the what. The point is this. They cannot receive, right? They cannot receive and God said, don't, do, don't try to contact the earth, the dead. When you say, I bow and grandma, you can receive my respect, right? You're saying what? That grandma can receive it. Then you are practicing what is in the Bible called witchcraft. Understand that? So remember, God says, do not do that. Do not try to. They cannot receive. They cannot receive. But can you go to the tombstone and pray? How? Oh, can? Go to the tombstone, everyone bow. So you, you know that bowing means I'm. By the Christian bowing, you are telling the rest of the world, Grandma can receive my respect. Understand that? means you are promoting what God says does not exist and cannot be. Right? I say again. Huh? So, um, Noah, why we should not, even though they no point, why we should not is when we do it, we are telling the world that grandma can actually receive my respect. Then it means that what? There is connection between the dead and the living. means God is false. God is a liar. Okay? So we should not. Understand or not? The Elim? But I was asking a question. Um, can you pray? Jesslyn, can you stand there and pray? Very good. You can stand there and pray. Everyone bow, you can stand there and pray. But you're not praying for grandma, understand? If grandma is in heaven, does grandma need your prayer? Grandma don't need your prayer, she's in heaven. So what do you pray about, Jesslyn?
Pray that no one hit me because I'm not bowing. <laughs> you can pray for the living. You always pray for the living, understand? You do not pray for the dead. You can stand there and pray, Lord, I pray that our, my cousins will come to know you as Lord and Saviour. Yes, uh, uh, Douglas. Uh, Master, what is uh, praying us for suicide will be misconstrued mm. by the other people around you, mm. that you are just praying to the dead? Right. So what happens if everyone thinks that you're praying to the dead? Hmm? Well, then sometimes if you think that's what's going to happen, then you avoid being around there at that time. Alright? Then you avoid. If you think that's how they're going to think, then best not to. Let them think that you're praying for the dead. Yes, Noah? Why don't Last you question. Tell, tell everybody that you're not praying to I am not praying to the dead. <laughs> Alright? You all bow, but me not praying to the dead. In fact, I'm praying for all of you. <laughs> it'll be a bit difficult. Noah, you're right, but it'll be a bit difficult. Right? It'll be a bit difficult. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, it's just your, maybe it's just another relative. Just like your relative. Yeah, I'm praying for you all. And then you can pray. You're right. So if you can make known to people, it's quite good. At least it clarifies. So Noah got a good suggestion. But sometimes you want to tell the whole, all the relatives that it's a bit difficult. All right? But yes, maybe you can tell a few. So good suggestion, Noah. Thank you. All right, so understand the principle. The Christian should not, because God called it, witchcraft. They cannot receive. When you do that, you're telling the world they can receive. They cannot. They cannot. Okay? The point is, respect your grandma, grandpa, love them when they are living. When they are dead, how you bow also no use. Understand that? Okay? Same for daddy and mommy. Okay, let us pray. What do we have here? Top five reasons why church dropouts. Uh, what church dropouts say, why they stop attending church. Now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view, um, they are the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So, from